What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm here today in Northwestern Ontario. It's the beginning of trout season. Today's the third day of season. I didn't fish yesterday because it was brutally cold. If you guys saw the first video I did, it was minus 31 Fahrenheit. Um, it was absolutely freezing cold. Today's a little bit warmer. I think we're like minus five Fahrenheit right now. Um, but it's supposed to get up to like six or something today. It's a little bit warmer. Same thing though, we got the new Mega Live set up from Humminbird. We're gonna show you guys some awesome underwater footage of it in action with lake trout. They're super fun to watch. They're in and out, they're darty. Um, they're just a really fun fish to watch on active sonar and, or live sonar I should say. And I'm gonna show you guys kinda, as I'm learning with this new technology, what I'm learning, what I'm picking up and show you to you guys in action on the ice here for some Lakers. Ooh, we got one right on us here, guys. See him on live? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Chasing it. He's chasing it down. Yo, look at him cruising from the side like that. It's so cool. Watch him dart back and forth. Oh, oh I just missed him. No! Right under the ice. You can see my jig going back down. Here it comes back. He's back. See him chasing it down? Look at him. Don't ask me why. Oh my gosh, this is sweet. He is. He's chasing it down again. See that big blob? The return is so hard, the deucer's actually reading him as bottom. Here he comes. Look at him. Oh! Got him. Yes! Oh, he's just a little one. Oh, he's just little, but that was so freaking cool! That uh, is not a big one by any means, but that was so cool to watch on live. I up, back and forth, up and down. That's just, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. He, my transducer actually picked up to reading him as bottom at one point. You can see the, the screen zoomed in, but just to watch that fish go up and down. I missed him once, he was right under the hole. Not a big one, like I say, by any means, guys. But that is so cool to watch and to see how they're interacting with that bait. It's just something different, something you don't see. Wow, that's cool. This is just a little guy. My mother-in-law actually wanted one to eat, and this is probably a good one. He's bleeding a little bit. So I think we're going to take this one home for Carrie. Give her some trout. Very cool. Very, very cool. Perfect eater size, small one like this. The Lakers get, they're so old. Um, by the time they get big, they grow so slow, especially living in these northern waters where the water's so cold. They have such a short growing season, plus they live in really deep, cold water. So this fish here is probably a handful of years old, but you get those five, six, eight, ten pounders, and those are the ones you want to let, let go and keep growing. But this one here, perfect little table fare. Awesome way to start the morning. All right, guys, so something else we're going to play with today is a, a dead stick rod or dead bait. I've got a Cisco over here on a rod, and I've got my pole position, as you can see, which way my transducer's pointing. My transducer is shooting this way, okay? It's shooting, basically, there's a top of a reef over here, and it drops off over here. And you can see that on our graph here. You can see to the right, which from the graph is obviously flipped around. So what, what looks to me, my left is actually right is where it's shallow and then you can see where it drops off and that drop off is going down this way towards my dead bait. Now the cool thing is I've got the dead bait suspended off the bottom and I want to see what these fish are doing when they come in and, and catch and you know hit a dead bait or come in and look at one because I've caught plenty of fish on them um, but I've always been curious is like do they come in and just slam it do they come up and kind of look at it bump it and softly take it but what I've got here is I've got the transducer set up so that you can actually see our dead bait. It's this little blip right here. It comes in and out um, depending on the signal strength. And I've got the sensitivity cranked up pretty high. And that's why you're seeing some of this fuzzy, other fuzzy stuff on the screen. I can kind of ignore that. But what that's going to allow me to do is pick up as much information as possible. That's what this technology is for. It's giving you information. So, yeah, I crank it up. Um, you can see there's some, some speckled stuff that's in the water column that's really not there. And it's what it's doing. It's, it's reflecting off that rock. This reef, there's such a, it's such a hard rock um, that that frequency is bouncing off and it's throwing some other scattered um, returns around. That's why you're seeing the lighter green kind of speckled here off the edge. 
that's just from the return from this signal from the transducer, okay? But I could get that to go away, um, but then I wouldn't be able to see quite as much. So I'm okay with having it cranked up and having a little bit of that extra junk in the column. Um, it doesn't bother me. I want to gain as much information as possible, and that's what having that sensitivity cranked up is doing. But you can see my dead bait off to the side, and it actually shows you. It's about 22 feet, 23 feet off to the side. You can see that Cisco. It's kind of a harder return. You'll see the red that comes into it. So that's our Cisco that's sitting there. It's about a 5-inch bait, just on a quick strike. And we'll see. For me, this is kind of like muskies, right? I mean, you can be casting, and you're going to have a sucker out the back. Well... 22 feet is basically the length of my boat. It'd be no different than someone casting in the front of the boat and having a sucker in the back of the boat. So I'm curious to see if some of the lazy fish that come in on the tube go and bite the dead bait or if some fish just come in and go straight to the dead bait. And I really want to see how they bite it. So we'll see if we can get a, a bite on that today. I'm always going to have it close by so we'll be able to see it on the live and see if there's any fish reacting to it or how they're reacting to it. Okay, so this is really cool. If you guys are looking on the live right now, you'll see this big ball of stuff below me and I've actually lost my bottom um, probably just due to how high I have my crank uh, sensitivity cranked but that's a school of bait fish it's just moving through the cone angle you'll see now that bait's starting to kind of move off the side so my deucer is kind of starting to pop back down into a little bit deeper but that's a bait ball um, that's just super cool to see you can still see my Cisco over here on the right hand side um, but this is just a school of bait so a lot of times you'll have the school of bait move through and there's some kind of fish chasing you'll see how that school just moved to the right that is so cool it almost looked like there was something on the bottom right here below them i'm gonna go to my menu here turn down my sensitivity see if i can shoot through these fish that was cool and another thing too you guys were asking me in the first video um where my settings are at i'll pull up my menu screen here so you guys can see sensitivity like i said i've got it cranked pretty high i'm at 17. contrast i bumped down to eight um, I got my range on auto, which I could probably switch just to, uh, determine where I want that bottom to be. I'm really, I'm going to set it at 55. I'm really not worried about anything that's deeper than 55. Um, but you guys can see that's where... I start to lose this drop off, right? I'm right on this lip, right on this edge. It's a super nice spot to be a great ambush point for trout. Um, and you guys saw that bait moving around up on top here. So leave that there. Um, that's something new for me. I do have my persistence on low, okay? And what the persistence is, is this purple smoke trail that you see um, just showing me where my tube's been. Just really cool. You can obviously turn that up higher if you want it to last longer. But if I stop my bait, that's slowly going to dissipate, okay? And then it's going to be gone. So you can see my Cisco over here really isn't moving, so there's no persistence mark from it, right? But as soon as I move my tube, you'll see that purple smoke trail. And I really like that. That's really cool just to show you which way those fish are moving, the direction, and it also kind of shows you the action of your bait. You can see that tube is kind of doing that corkscrew down, which is really, really nice. Oh, here we go. Look at that trout. See the trout right in the dead bait? Here he is, guys. There's that big mark. He's right on the dead bait. He's literally staring at it right now. Watch that mark. Oh, here he comes. He sees the tube. Look at this. He sees the tube. Look at this. Oh, he fell off. He was looking. Oh, here he comes. He was looking at the dead bait, and he saw the tube and came flying over the tube. Here he comes back. See if he'll chase it down. Come on, chase it down. Where'd he go? Oh, that was cool. Oh, there he's going back to the dead bait. See, he's right back in the dead bait. Look at that, look at that, look at that. He's going right to it. I'm not even gonna distract, I'm just gonna, not even gonna move my tube. Look at him, he's just sitting there staring at it. So last time he was looking at it like this, I was jigging. And he saw my bait and he came over and looked at it. But I, I'm just going to leave my tube sit there. I want to see what he does. He's circling that bait. Now he's gone. I'll jig it, see if I can get his attention. Here he is off to the side. Oh, there he's going to look at it again. Oh my gosh. That is like so cool. Here he's coming closer to it. Come on, eat it, eat it, eat it. 
eat it. He's just staring at it. Oh, now he's going away. Now he's going back to it. He can't make up his mind. He's just going back and forth. Or he's doing circles around or something. Come on, bite it. He's right on it. Like he is sniffing it. Oh my gosh, that's cool. Okay, now we fade it off. You can still see the dead bait sitting there. Wow. That is cool. The fish originally came in, looked at the dead bait, saw my jig. Here he is. He's back. He's looking at it again. He wants to eat it so bad. Look at him. He's right on it. He's got that covered up. I can't even see the dead bait. He's kind of fading towards me now. Here he comes to me. Oh, there's two of them. There's one in the dead bait and there's one coming to me. Oh, here comes the other one from the dead bait. Look at him screaming towards my bait. He sees me falling. Let's see if we can get him to chase. Here he is. He's right under it. Oh, he failed. He failed off. There he is. He's on it. Come on, he's going back to the dead bait. So there's just two fish there. This one's look, that one was looking at the dead bait. He's right back to it. Look at that. Right back to it. He's right there. He just spun around. He's coming back to it again. He's just staring at that dead bait. That is crazy. That's a good mark too. That one looks bigger. So that that's exactly what I wanted to see. I want to see how these fish are reacting to this dead bait. And it's cool to see them go from that to me, that to me. We're, we're 25 feet apart. And obviously it, it tells you too that these fish can see, can see that far. Right? Because that fish is there and it came shooting over to my tube. It could see my tube. That is so freaking cool. I don't even care that we didn't get one to bite. That was just really cool to watch and see how they're interacting with a bait, with a moving bait, and then a dead bait. Here we go, guys. Here's one looking at the dead bait. Right on the dead bait. He's doing donuts around that dead bait. That fish is right there. Here he comes. He sees the two. Here we go. Look at this. He starts pulling away from him. See if he'll chase it. Not really. Look at it, he turns around and goes right back to where he came from towards that dead bait. Here he sees the tube now, he turned around. He's kind of lazy. Makes you wonder like, you know, should I have a live minnow over there? Does he want a little bit of action? It's just, it's so hard to keep minnows alive when you're, I mean, I'm coming up 20, 25 miles by snowmobile and all the bumps and everything. It'd be really hard to get live minnows up here, but it, be curious to see if that makes a difference. And a lot of people lay dead bait on the bottom and uh, it's super effective and it probably looks more realistic when you've got a, a dead fish laying in the bottom versus a dead fish that's suspended in the water column. Um, but we wouldn't be able to see how those fish are reacting to that because it'd just be laying on the bottom. So I want to have it suspended. I've caught plenty of fish with dead bait suspended. It doesn't have to be laying on the bottom. So this was just, I wanted to see, like, I want to see, like you say, if they're coming up and just sucking it in or if it's just a flying streak and they slam it out of nowhere and I'm sure that kind of depends from fish to fish um, just their activity level and their mood but just watching it's information that's what this is guys it's information it's helping you learn what these fish are doing and it's even putting you know some of my hunches or things I've been wondering about forever you can actually see it all happen here now and you just understand your fish that much better here you go look at this one he came, oh, lost him. He came flying in from the shallow side. Look at this. He's going right to the dead bait. Oh my God. He's just staring at it. Freaking drag. 
Here he is, he's coming back to the tube now. This is the same exact fish, guys. Fell off. Oh, did he just eat it? He bumped it. Oh, there's two of them. You see that other fish? Come on, take line. Does that fish have that? He has it. Have it. Have it. Have it. Have it. Have it or is that just the sinker taking it down? Okay, so there are two fish there. I don't think he has, I don't know. He has this one or not? Nope. Oh. oh my god. Yep, we got him. Frickin' drag. I don't know what is going on with these reels. So you guys can probably see me fighting this fish. I left. Oh, there's the... Oh my god. This is terrible. Okay, so we got one on the dead bait. You guys can probably watch me fight this fish. Oh yeah, he's right there. I just saw him. It's a nice one. You probably watched me fight him. Probably you can't see him probably right now because he's right under the ice. But there's my setup right there. There was two fish. Okay, here's our leader. Yep, there's our trout. Come on, buddy. Stop it, stop it. No. There's two hooks and I almost got one in my hand right there. Got him. Okay. Alright. Here's our fish guys. Boom. You guys can see here's the Cisco. Okay, we gotta get that out. We got tools right here. Pliers. Here's our Cisco. It's down there deep. I'm going to come through the gills. Not trying to hurt this fish. But it's the best angle to get at it. Boom. Out just like that. Okay. All right, it's cold. So I'm gonna get this fish back, but there it is. There's our trout on dead bait, guys. There's two of them. There was two fish. Oh, I gotta get them back. There he goes. There was two fish. And that's been, that's been what's happening. It's almost like they're traveling in packs of two because I had one on me on the tube and then I don't, I don't know, I just, <laughs> I forget how it all happened, but there was one on me, there was one in the dead bait, and then the, the dead stick rod went off. Wow, I'm gonna have to look back at the footage and see what all happened there, but that was cool. Mission accomplished. We got one on a jig stick, we got one on a dead bait. All right, so while I'm warming my hands up here, guys, I'll show you the Cisco. I just threw this stuff out, I wanted to get that fish back. So here's our Cisco, four or five inch profile. Um, running just a homemade quick strike rig with it. Um, we got a VMC, I think that's like a number six. And then I rigged it like a drop shot. So I just tied a polymer and then put the tag in through the eye of the hook again, and then tied another polymer down here with a little bit smaller one. Um, but I ran the line through there like you would for a drop shot. This split shot I was running just right on top of the hook, just like that. And we got a fluorocarbon leader here to our dead stick rod. 15 pound fluoro, like a number six and a number, maybe a number four and a number six. Not exactly sure on the on the size and the hooks, but there's our dead bait. 
This is what our fish kept looking at. Nice big juicy one. And uh, I think we can get another fish out of him. No, no, no. I just reeled my bait up. I was going to check it. And the fish came from the shallow side. Come on. Look at that. There's a school of bait. Oh, here he is. Look at this. Here he is. Came back. Oh, he's going over to the dead bait. Right over to that dead bait. Now he's gone. That was cool because there's a. It's. So stupid. I was reeling up to make sure my to make my tube flat again. And he came screaming from the shallow side. And then right after that there's a pot of bait on the shallow side. So that fish was definitely tending to a a pot of bait. If anyone overlooked at the at the dead bait. So the shallow side's over here. I'm here. The dead bait's over there. So that fish originally came from over here, came to me, went over to the dead bait, and then <laughs> Whatever, just it's crazy how much water they're covering. I mean, I can see, you know, 30 feet's the edge of my screen, so I can probably see about 35. Um, so I'm covering 70 feet of water, and that's how fast that fish is swimming back and forth, which is so cool. Here we go, guys. There's one going to the dead bait. Oh, right on the dead bait. Circling it, looking at it. He's all over that dead bait, he's just doing circles around it. I really want to go over there and just lift it and see if they'll change anything, but this is what I really want is him to come chase this thing. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is, he's right on it, he's following it down. Oh, he didn't like that. Here he is, he's on it again. He's going back to the dead bait. It is so cool how they'll go from staring at the dead bait to coming over and looking at me and then going back to the dead bait like, look at it, he's just sitting there staring at it now. Now he's coming back towards me again. That is, look at him, he just, he has to be looking at something. It's either me or the dead bait. Just eat one of them. There he is, he's below it, right here. Here he is, he's deeper than it, he's creeping up to it. That's what's cool about that persistence. It, it's kind of hard to see because you've got that return, but there you could see him because of that purple line. It's just so interesting to me, like, how fast they go from one to the other. That's really cool. I mean, we're not that far apart. I mean, that's one kick of the tail for a fish, right? But it's just, it has to be doing something. Like, it, it can't just be hanging out or chilling. Like, it's either looking at me or looking at the dead bait. That's so cool. There we go, guys. We just got bit right there. Is he running with it? I don't know if he's got it or not. He's just sitting there. I don't see him kicking any line, but what I don't see is the Cisco, which leads me to believe he's got it. This GoPro just shut off because it's so freaking cold. 
just sitting there munching on it or what? Yep, got him. What a disaster. GoPros in the cold, not fun. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, baby. <sighs> he was just sitting there with it. After he ate it, he wasn't moving. That's interesting. Like a lot of times, generally when they hit it, they they run and they take off. Seems like it'd be a nice fish too. Here's your leader. Oh. Oh yeah. Really nice fish. Really nice fish. Freaking choke that Cisco. I do not want to hook in my hand. I can see him. There's one. There's the other. Perfect. See that? Nothing down his throat. He T-boned it. We'll grab a players. Boom, there's our fish guys. Nice, another one on the dead bait. <laughs> that was crazy, it sucks as my GoPro on my graph actually just shut off. It's so cold out here. We're still probably in single digits. I think we got above freezing now, but nice fish on the dead bait. We're gonna get him back right away. Pretty nice and dark. Got some orange to his fins. And he's out of here. Whew. That was cool. That one came in. Came in from the deep side. And uh, never even came and looked at the tube. Just ate the dead bait right away. Yes. There we go. One coming in from the side. Here he comes fast. Oh my god, I just missed him. Come on, come back, please. Oh, he's getting the hell out of here. Come on. Oh, I've been waiting hours. Here he comes, he's coming back. Come on. I've been waiting so long for this one freaking bite. Come on, come on, come on. This afternoon has been an absolute struggle. Come on, come back. I was chasing it down. Come on, come back. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. It's right on it. Oh, come on. He likes it going down, that's for sure. Come on, buddy. Oh, no. He hit it on the fall. That was... I'm not going to get a third shot at this one. Come on. Oh, no. On a freaking blade bait, too. Like, high hooking percentage. I was just real. I was, I was literally just about to reel up. You're going to call it a day. Comes in from the side. Man, they were... They were finicky today. We marked a lot of fish. Um, I should say we, we marked a good amount of fish today. But they just weren't super active. We had some that chased hard. 
Well, we got one jig in, we got two undead sticks, but it was really cool just to see their attitude um, and really read their body language. Just going between the bait and the, the dead bait and then uh, the tube or the blade bait or whatever, either, either one of the baits. And it was cool because a handful of times, I'd say about half the time they came in in pairs, there'd be two fish. So if they're kind of hunting together, or working together to corral bait fish or whatever they're up to, it's, it's just really cool to see that. This being my second day with, with the Mega Live, um, just learning a lot about the fish themselves. And, and that's, that's invalid. Like, you cannot put a price on that. That is incredibly valuable information. Um, and just learning, learning what these fish are doing, what they like. It was so cool to just see how they would sit and stare at that dead bait for so long and uh then all of a sudden come flying back over to you know what i was jigging or, and then go back and forth so a lot of cool stuff learned a lot today we're running out of light i gotta get back and yeah i think i'm gonna be back at it again tomorrow but thank you guys so much for watching if you guys are not already please consider subscribing below uh, we've got a lot of lake trout content here in the winter tons of musky content and all kinds of other freshwater stuff so thank you guys again so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one